In this video, we will create a LiDAR intensity image from a LiDAR dataset, which is covered in chapter 15 of the book, Working with LiDAR using ArcGIS Desktop, which is available on Amazon. The intensity in a LiDAR image is the measurement of the reflective strength of every return to the LiDAR sensor. We take the intensity measurements for each return to create a raster of LiDAR intensity. First, we will need to be sure that the statistics that have been calculated for each of the last data sets contains the intensity values. To do this, we will open Arc Catalog, right click on the last data set file that we are using in the table of contents and select Properties. Under the Last Files tab, we can select the Statistics button, which will display a Last File Properties and Statistics window which will include the intensity statistics we want to verify. Another way to do this is to click on the Statistics tab. If you are using the same data set as we have been using in the previous chapters, the range should be from 1 to 5,100. If you are working on a larger data set, it could take some time for these statistics to populate. If for some reason the statistics are not showing, you can click on Force Calculate. Now add the last data set that you are using. For this video, it is the Hopkinsville, Kentucky LiDAR file. To create an intensity image, we will only be using the first returns, so set the filter to first returns. Open Arc Toolbox and navigate to the Conversion Tools, then to Raster, and then Last Data Set to Raster. For the input last data set, use the last data set you are working on for this exercise. Next, select an output folder location and file name. After this, we will change the value field to intensity. Under interpolation types, we will select binning using an average cell assignment type and a simple void fill method. Finally, select the float as your output data type, cell size sampling type, and the sampling value of your raster. So once we have the output, there may be pixels which have no data values, but since this color ramp we are using includes white, it is pretty much impossible to identify no data pixels. The easiest way to find these values is to change the color of no data values. To do this, in the table of contents, right click on the intensity image, then go to properties and open the symbology tab. Here we can change the display no data value to another color. If you are using the Kentucky dataset, you'll notice that this highlights much of the water surface, but not all of it. From a previous tutorial, Chapter 14, Adding Surface Constraints to a Last Dataset, we created a feature class of water bodies within our last dataset. We can add a surface constraint to our last dataset to remove the LiDAR returns from the water bodies. We can add the surface constraint in ArcMap by opening the Arc Toolbox, then selecting Data Management Tools, then Last Dataset, and select Add Files to Last Dataset. The input Last Dataset will be the last dataset that we are using. After scrolling to Surface Constraints, we will locate our Water Feature class. For the Height field, we will set it to None, and the SF type will be set to Hard Erase. Select OK to run the tool. After the tool is finished processing, you can check in the Properties Surface Constraint tab that the constraint has been added. Ensure that the constraint is enabled with a checkbox. Next, be sure that we have set the filter to First Returns, which can be found in the Last Dataset toolbar. Now open the Last Dataset to Raster tool, where we will enter the appropriate parameters. Ensure that the output name is descriptive, but less than 13 characters. That the value field is set to Intensity, the void fill method is set to simple, and the sampling value is 1. Once it is finished processing, we can change the symbology of our raster to a purple to green diverging dark color ramp, and invert the color ramp so that the dark green represents features such as trees and rooftops. We can keep the no data as blue to highlight water features intuitively. We can now see that the water features have all been identified as no data cells. Next, before we proceed, let's open the properties for the last dataset and disable the water surface constraint. Once this is done, we can experiment with some other parameters in the tool. Here, we can change the default cell size to 10 with a void fill method of simple. Making the cell sizes larger will make the image appear smoother and also reduce the number of intensity values. 
You may also notice that there are fewer water pixels with no data values. In this next example, we can change the cell size back to one, but change the void fill method to a natural neighbor. This result should completely fill the entire raster so that there are no no data values. Ultimately, the method that you select is highly dependent on the nature of your last data set and the purpose of the data. My name is Eric. Thanks for watching. This video is produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research, with funding from the American View Consortium in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.